USC football coach Lincoln Riley has kept everything under wraps regarding the Trojans in spring football practice, or even if they're having spring football practice. Considering the way the Trojans looked last year, can you blame them? I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelinos. We are broadcasting from Ice Station Angelino here in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, and I must be honest with you, I feel like I've given the locals the short end of the stick about their intelligence. I've only seen 10 people eat the yellow snow. Maybe a little brighter than what I would previously had uh, let people know. If you've liked the content we've put out the last couple of weeks, feel free to clickety-clack the like button, clickety-clack the subscribe button. There's also a notifications bell. Hit that. <laughs> It'll tell you when we drop a new video. It's going to be between the hours of 9 and 10 on Pacific uh, time every day, hopefully. Sharing is caring. Let people know that I've made a new video. We want to try and increase the faithful Angelinos. And in addition to that, comment on YouTube. I'm not God. I don't know everything. What can we talk about with regards to Los Angeles sports? This is March 8th, last night. The LA Kings defeated the Bruins in overtime, 3-2. Andreas Athanasiu scored the game winner for LA. In addition to that, you might recall that LeBron James went bananas against the Warriors a few nights ago. Yeah, that cost him. He had, quote-unquote, significant knee issues. We don't know what that means yet. He missed last night's game. As a result, San Antonio 117, Lakers 110. Tonight, a game you can watch on TNT at 7 p.m., the Clippers will be playing the Golden State Warriors. News and notes from around Los Angeles sports. Phil Jackson has been chatting with Lakers owner Jeannie Buss, the former coach and the current owner, used to be lovers and there's no way I can say it without making it sound sleazy speaking of sleazy they've been talking about the team apparently now we know that there has been a lot of uh back talk about Russell Westbrook now it doesn't mean that Phil Jackson has been the one throwing Russell Westbrook around like that but it could what do you think? Feel free to let me know. Uh, by the way, I would rule out a coaching comeback, at least for now. LeBron James, quote, I am not a fan of Phil Jackson. So you might not, might not put a lot of money into him coming back and coaching. People have been asking why I don't talk a lot about the Rams offseason. And the reason is because the Rams offseason is obvious. They want to extend Matthew Stafford's contract. No, duh. Aaron Donald extension. No, duh. But what I can tell you is that Von Miller has been dropping social media hints. Photos of Inst in, on Instagram of him wearing Denver Broncos jerseys again. Hey guys, which one do you like? And I gotta tell you, these photos kind of remind you of the trampy ex who's like posting bikini pics on Instagram. Rams fans, just try not to get too worked up, okay? You've got to maintain. Don't be like what you would do with the Trampy X. Try not to text Von Miller at 2 a.m. and ask, yo, baby, what's up? I haven't talked about this yet. Um, WNBA star Brittany Griner, if there is such a thing as a WNBA star, she's been detained in Russia. Uh, she was trying to leave Russia. You know, a lot of WNBA players play overseas. Uh, she was detained. She had something that she allegedly shouldn't have had. I've reached out to the LA Sparks to try to see if any Sparks players also play in Russia or the Ukraine. Uh, no response. Maybe they were surprised somebody called. I don't know. Maybe they were surprised somebody actually tweeted at them. Also, Paul George of the Clippers. He has now been seen shooting right-handed. That's the L with the elbow that he injured. And there is no timetable for his return. Uh, we haven't even been told by the Clippers what were the results of his MRI from a week or so ago. We only know that he's scheduled for another. So no timetable, no telling if that's good progress or not. Let's move on to the main topic, USC. New coach Lincoln Riley hired from Oklahoma. 
he replaces Clay Helton, who was part of the downfall of one of college football's most storied programs, the Trojans, last year. They only finished 4-8. and eight. That rarely happens, missing a bowl game. People were asking Lincoln Riley why he went Hollywood, and I would surmise that there are two reasons. One, Oklahoma was going to the SEC. That makes being in the national title picture significantly tougher than in the Big 12. And the other reason, it's the money. Stop it. Stop trying to say it's the glory of this, that, or the other, or, or how amazing LA is. Let's be real. We have money. Oklahoma doesn't. That's why. It's the money. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the Trojans on offense. We know that they're going to be fun. We know they're going to score points. We know that there's a lot of transfers coming in. Caleb Williams transferred from Oklahoma, followed his coach. Wide receiver Mario Williams transferred from Oklahoma, followed his coach. The Trojans have even stolen Oregon's leading running back from last year, Travis Dye. They're going to be fun on offense. Which, by the way, is going to be the same offense that was run under Clay Helton. Which is strange. And then you sit there and you go, well, what about defense? They're going to run a 3-3-5 defensive alignment. Which is the same one they ran last season. Which is strange. Matter of fact, the last two defensive coordinators under Clay Helton ran the 3-3-5. <clears throat> Excuse me, Todd Orlando and Pe Clancy Pendergast. Pendergast. Now, why is this reliance on an unusual defensive formation? Well, it's designed to confuse spread offenses. A lot of West Coast colleges run the spread on offense. You need speed, and you can also be adjustable out of it. You can go from a three-three-five quickly to a four-three or a three-four. Alex Grinch is your new defensive coordinator. So. What does Alex Grinch have on the roster? Not much. And that's why I want to talk defense. Because you can score a bunch of points, but if you can't scout, if you can't if you can't stop the other team, you're in trouble. And last year USC's defense points allowed 11th out of the 12 teams in the uh, in the Pac-12. So, defensive line, the idea is to shoot the gap. Three down linemen, instead of taking on one lineman at a time, you kind of shoot in between the two. Hopefully that engages two offensive linemen, gives the linebackers a chance to make the plays. Here's the problem. They're inexperienced, both a defensive line and linebacker. Now they are returning three linemen. Uh, that is true. Brandon Peely is at nose tackle. He was injured for a lot of last year. Inexperienced. Uh, if they were starting today, Corey Foreman would be one of the ends. He didn't play a lot last year. He missed entire halves because he wasn't producing. Tui, Tui Polodu was is returning. He does have experience. He led the Trojans in sacks last year. Five and a half. Not good. It's just not that good. We got to be real. We got to be real. So how much improvement could this line possibly have? Feel free to comment. Feel free, because we don't know. We're not getting a chance. We don't know even if USC is having spring practice. Spring practice for the Trojans started last year on March 8th, today. We don't know. Meanwhile, the linebackers, the most experienced linebacker, Romello Height, he's a transfer from Auburn, most experienced. He's played 10 games, 10 Middle linebacker Shane Lee transferred from Alabama. You may as well hope he suits up in 55 soon because <laughs> apparently he is the guy who's getting the rave reviews from what little we know about Trojan football. The other linebacker, uh, Raylan Goforth, no idea. In the meantime, the Trojans are almost always going to have five defensive backs in the backfield. Always in the nickel. They need depth. They spend a lot of time trying to convince people to come to uh, transfers. Defensive backs transferring in. There are 13 new players for SC and 18 of them have left. So they're always going to be in a nickel. They're always going to need defensive backs. So no depth. They've lost three pass rushers. It's pretty much because everybody knew when Helton was fired last year, everybody on the roster from last year knew that it was a sinking ship and they needed to flee. So there's been a ton of turnover. 
but yet they're running the same stuff. And so the question arises, how is this not the definition of insanity? We've all heard the cliche, doing the same thing, expecting the different result. And I put my mind to it, and the I think what the Trojans are hoping for, what Mike Bone, the athletic director, is hoping for, is he's saying, well, Helton had the right idea. He just had no idea how to teach it. And Lincoln Riley does. That's a gamble. So this talk of a rapid turnaround for uh, USC could happen. It's... Helton set an extremely low bar at four and eight. But do you really think it's going to happen? Don't get me wrong. Even if they double their wins, they go eight and four. People are going to be pretty happy about that. For now. For now, anyway. USC is supposed to be a, t a, a college that's always in the title picture for, for football. Tell me what you think. Because we are all flying blind here. We don't even know if they are practicing. Lincoln Riley is a syncretive man. Do you have any inside dope? Because I sure as heck don't. It's been an interesting morning, I will say that. If you enjoyed this episode, I, I invite you again to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. Don't forget to do that. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We're going to be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corta El Queso production. Have a great day. Bye-bye.